Uh, so my goal for today is to address some of the concerns the students may have in terms of the logistics of the class. Um, I have a students not only from San Bernardino this semester, but basically from all over the states, which makes it a little bit more difficult. Uh, so you might be new to Canvas or you're coming back. Um, this is your first semester and you haven't taken an online class. Uh, so the goal for this meeting right now is to just go over the logistics of the class and make sure that you guys are comfortable where you can find your information. Um, all of you guys that are here, uh, you either belong to Bio 155, which is Introductory Anatomy Physiology. Um, you are either Bio 250, which is the first semester of Anatomy Physiology, or 251, which is the second session or semester of Anatomy Physiology. Regardless of which class you belong to, your logistics will be identical, which makes it a lot easier for uh, students to actually ask me questions or um, in terms of the scheduling for the schedules and the times the exams are available. So if you do have any questions, again, um, I will uh, be answering those as I go through them. Please don't ask me questions right now because uh, the questions might be addressed as soon as you guys if you just wait for me to basically um, go over the concepts. Um, so give me a minute, let me go over the concepts, and if something isn't clear, then you are welcome to type your questions in the chat box. Um, so I am going to share my screen with you. Uh, so the screen that I'm gonna share with you guys is Bio 250. Uh, don't panic. The way the class is set up again is the same for all classes, regardless of which of the bio classes you're taking, the screen will be very similar for you. There might be information here and there that might be different, but it, the difference would be minor. So let me go ahead and get started on that for you. Um, so again, if you are uh, new to Canvas, you just log in, I'm assuming you're here, so you have been able to log into Canvas. Um, if you do have any difficulty with logging to Canvas or any issues, please make sure you guys uh, contact the um, IT department or help desk uh, that you can find that information in my, um, what do you need to, sorry, welcome to Bio250 or just directly from your campus page. So when you guys go and log into your page, this is the basic page that you will see. Um, so. Um, if you haven't played around, I've seen some of the students already submitting assignments, which is great job, guys. Keep up the good work. Um, but um, just pe for people that haven't really started to look in the class and we're just extending their breaks as long as they could. Um, what we're looking at at the beginning, again, uh, for all three classes, I have this kind of welcome module uh, that includes your information for your class. Basically, what is the purpose of you taking this class? Um, there is a video that I recorded for you that includes some logistical information as well, and some basic information about me as well. The second is, a, I think, a 12-minute uh, video that describes um, what is basically an online class would look like, some of addressing some of the myths and concerns that the students may have. And then the last one, it will have your corresponding class syllabus. Again, the syllabus will be very similar. Uh, I'll go over some of the concepts with you as uh, we go through the, um, basically, the, I guess, meeting today. Uh, so going down, I'm just gonna kind of look at the main page that you will see. Um, so what you will expect to see is you have uh, lecture units that are broken down to basically how many lecture exams you have. So Barrio 250 and 251 each will have four lectures. So that corresponds to lecture unit one through four. Uh, if you're a biology 155 class, the introductory course, then you will have five lecture units instead. When you guys log in or just basically clicking on one of these uh, pages, if it is available, what you will see is a very brief introduction of what this uh, week lecture and lab is going to be about. So basically the focus for the class in a format of overview. And then if you scroll down, it gives you the information what you need to complete for this week. So if you are confused about, okay, what am I supposed to be doing today, right? Or what am I supposed to be doing for this week? All you need to do is click on the corresponding um, module week and then you basically go there 
and everything is for you is hyperlinked. So you don't really need to go look for a document somewhere else. Everything you need will be here in this page. So kind of again, walk you guys through this process. Um, every class, regardless again, will have a Canvas post. This is an opportunity for you guys to introduce yourself to your classmate and also respond to a couple of your classmates. I have introduced myself in uh, the Canvas post as well. So if you guys want to learn a little bit more about me, uh, this is the first semester you're taking me. Uh, you may find some information on the first original reply for me. And again, you're welcome to reply to me and ask me questions that you may be interested to know about me. I, um, I try to be as open book as I can be. Um, the second thing is, again, regardless of what class you are, uh, it would be the lecture slides we have for that. So I'm just going to click on that and it's going to show you what the page would look like. Um, so it will take you to this page and um, it takes a while for the, the PowerPoint, especially if it's large, to download. But what you will see here is a download option for the file that you can. I always tell my students, please make sure you guys download the document because you can basically view this page as it is and then also look at your presentation. So everybody's working off of a computer, so download your file and while you're, after your file is downloaded, then you can actually look at the presentation. Uh, so it's literally, if you were in my class, in a face-to-face -face class, you will still be doing the same thing, so it wouldn't be different. Now going down, you will see multiple or um, a single PowerPoint, depending on how I actually completed the recordings. So this one, this is your lecture PowerPoint, and this is going, this is me going over that lecture PowerPoint. Uh, so for me, I have broken down to three lectures in here. Typically, if it's a, a smaller fragments, they're about 30 minutes. If they're longer, they can be up to an hour 10, an hour 15 minutes. So this one is typically about 30 minutes each, which gives you about an hour and a half of just pure lectures. Now, after you guys review this, again, for this class, there's three, yours might be different. Um, after you finish this, then basically, I wanna make sure you guys have a study day information so there's a Canvas post associated with your PowerPoint and your lecture presentation. So let me just click on that and just kind of show you what that would look like. So here is what it looks like. So in this thing, I have asked three questions. Each of the questions basically have a point associated with it. And this way it makes it clear as far as what you guys need to be answering and what will happen if you miss one of the questions. So assume that the points in front of it is kind of your uh, rubric for that assignment. Now notice up here, it has the information as far as the due date. So it's due, due by this Friday at 11.59, the number of points that you have and the fact that you can either directly type into this assignment, so to answer the questions, or you can type it in a Word document and then attach the file. That's a file upload. So let me just show you what it would look like again if you choose one or the other option. So right here, um, notice that I said choose a file. So basically if you chose to do a Word document, you save it under Canvas Post 2, let's say title, and then choose the file, attach it, and then submit the assignment, okay? If you choose to directly answer the questions in Canvas and not have it typed somewhere else and transfer it, you go to the text entry box and it opens the box for you with the question showing right on the top. You are welcome to copy and paste the questions. It makes the grading a little bit easier for me because then I know what I'm actually grading. So I would strongly recommend for you to do that. However, if you don't do that, that is still fine. It's not a requirement. And again, if you're done, just click the uh, button Submit Assignments, and um, that's about it. And you're good to go for your um, Canvas posts. Canvas posts are a way for me to basically track that you guys are doing your weekly activity in terms of your studies. That's the goal of this assignment. Anytime you guys, again, deviate from the main page and you want to go back, your module is going to be your key. So I'm going to go back to week one again. Scrolling down farther, uh, what you will notice here is um, that it has um, uh, the information about homeostatic feedback loop. So basically I'm telling you go back and revisit what we have studied. 
uh, earlier in the lecture. And then you're going to be completing a lab one homeostasis with the submit date view here. Surprisingly, I actually forgot to put that here for this lab, uh, but usually when, I mean, it should, it should be always actually. Whenever you see a lab, right where it says complete, right here, it would say either it is a group assignment or it's an, an individual assignment, okay? So that basically tells me when, it, the, the type of submissions that you guys will have. So let me just click on it. This is a group assignment, so I'll just wanna show you what it will look like. So here is your lab. Um, this is the information basically you will read. Uh, there's a few videos that you will be basically clicking and viewing. These are the data that you will be completing and answering the questions. And then again, scroll down when you get to the bottom. These are the, again, it, this one is a long lab, I apologize, but <laughs> basically it's part of the class. Um, when you're done answering the questions, all you need to do is go and submit the assignments. So notice right here, this is where it gives you that information. So keep in mind, this submission will count for everybody in your unit one group. What that means is that this is a group assignment, which means that everybody would have been working together and one person would be responsible for submission of that assignment. As soon as one person submitted, it will be submitting for every member in that group, okay? Is there any questions or anything that need clarification so far, guys? Because I wanna kind of address anything that we have. If you guys have any questions related to what I've asked, what I've discussed so far. I'll give you a minute if you guys wanna type a question. And if you're done, uh, this one is only a file upload because there's charts and things that you need to do. Um, so um, make sure that you guys um, uh, basically copy and paste this in a Word document, answer your questions and then complete that. Um, no, you do not need to buy anything for the lab and um, any requirement that is basically needed for the lab is there in that lab package. Uh, for our class, originally we were supposed to have um, uh, access to mastering uh, um, anatomy physiology or one of the options that are out there in terms of um, questions, um, but um, we ended up not having um, access to that. It didn't go through, so I had to set up the class without that. Uh, so all of your labs are basically going to be very similar to what I've shown you. There is an introduction at the beginning um, with videos possibly attached to it. And then there are questions that you guys need to answer um, related to that. And that's about it. And again, most of the labs I have set up for you guys are going to be group assignment. If it is not group assignment, it would write literally individual assignment. Okay. Um, where do you find who is part of the group lab? That's the next thing I'm gonna address. So give me one second, I will show you that. Uh, when will you know who your group members are? Again, everything is already set up. The group members will be the same for the rest of the class. Um, and uh, sorry, or the, I should say rest of the semester. Um, so that's not going to change. Um, uh, and I'll show you what the policies are on that in just a second. Um, Yes, the assignment that I'm showing you is for Biology 250. Um, so again, don't look at the name of the assignment or what I'm showing you, but content would be different. But the way you would do the same thing, the policy, the, the steps that you're following to get to the final thing will still be the same, okay? So let me show you this here. So how do you find out who is in your group? So if you look at the uh, tab bar on the side, you see an option that says people. Okay, so when you click on that, and I'm gonna leave this because we're not submitting an assignment right now. So this is basically everybody that's in this class right now, okay? But right now, if I click on this option says groups, so if I click on the group, and I see everybody because basically, or you might actually have seen everybody as well, but what you will see is if you open this, notice it has uh, individual names that belong to your group, right? Um, so what you also will see is you see this little person next to, some, next to someone's name. So what that basically means is that um, the person is going to be your leader, okay? 
so that leader is responsible for submission of the assignment. Now let's say in this case, sorry, I'm gonna, if Daniel's here, sorry, I'm gonna put you on a spot. Let's say Daniel is responsible and it's considered to be the um, leader. Um, however, um, that leader is um, not available to submit the, sub the assignment at that point, or there's something wrong with the computer, whatever the reason is. Any other member in the group can still submit the assignment with no problem. It just makes it easier in terms of logistical process for the group to have that leader to submit the assignment. But that doesn't prevent any other member from submitting that assignment instead. Hopefully that answered the question about the lab. Now, how do you guys get engagement from your group mates? That is completely up to you. So if you go back, and again, this is the same for everybody, so I'm sharing one class syllabus right now, uh, but that would be still true for um, anybody. The policies are literally identical from one lab to another. So if you go to your syllabus, and I'm just gonna kind of wait for this to load. Hopefully everybody sees the page, right? It didn't change. Okay, so when you go down, see how it says lab assignments? So lab assignments and some lab activities and assignments are going to be completed as group activities. And these are the policies you guys need to follow basically uh, to um, get engagement from your classmates. So I strongly suggest, and I know most of you guys work with your phones and texting, I'm assuming um, I'm old fashioned, so I don't do as much texting. But what, you, what I would recommend to you guys is go to the people, the tab that I showed you earlier, Figure out how your group member, who your group members are. Uh, send a group email to everybody. And then ask for individual phone numbers, which is, you're comfortable with. And I'm not gonna force that because again, a lot of people have privacy issues and don't want that. Uh, but that's again, um, asking for a Google voice number or a WhatsApp number, something that you're more comfortable with rather than your personal cell phone number, that's fine. Uh, as far as you have a means of communication you're welcome to use Zoom. Uh, you can open your own Zoom account and create these Hangout groups with each other. You can use um, Google Docs, which automatically updates it for everybody that has access to it. Uh, you can use um, Hangout option, which is um, the version of, um, I believe Google, if I got that right, um, or Google Meet, I'm sorry, it's called Google Meet. You can FaceTime with each other, you can email, whatever gets the job done, that's fine with me. What I don't want to hear from my students, uh, because I think you guys have outgrown that, I hope, is you're all adults, uh, that I don't want to hear complaining about students. I can't work with this group. I can't do this. I can't do that. Now, the only thing that I will see problem with is if a member does not respond to you at all. So you have tried to communicate multiple times, and that individual within your group is not corresponding with you, period. So let's say you submit an assignment, you, none of the members in your group have heard anything from a, a single member in your group, then what I would be doing to that individual, and I'm telling you right now, so don't get surprised, you will be removed from that group until you have communicated with me the purpose why you weren't participating in your group activity. So everybody else would receive a grade minus that individual that was originally part of the group but did not participate. So just don't expect because your name is in a group, you can just sit down and don't do anything and everybody else in your group will take care of it. If I unanimously heard from your group and I want to have it as a group email, guys, that somebody didn't participate in submitting a lab, they didn't do anything to help you guys work the activity out, send me a group email which includes everybody's in that group minus that individual's name. and um tell me exactly why the reason is how have you tried to communicate with them and uh, at that point i can if it is reasonable then i can remove that individual from your group so they won't get the grade so they will basically receive a zero and that person is responsible for contacting me and letting me the reason they haven't participated okay does that sound reasonable to everybody and again, I answered the question, how to engage it? That's up to you. Read the policies that are in your syllabus. Um, perfect. Um, okay, so some people say they don't see a group option on their Canvas uh, uh, 
yours might be different. You might only be saying your own group name. So if you see your own group, then you're fine. If you still don't see that, then um, you can wait at the end and um, uh, wait for it and just kind of, I guess, contact me directly and we'll work through that. Um, but you should see your own group. The only people that will not be able to see a group, and I'm telling you this right now, is people who have added the class in the past 24 hours to 48 hours. Uh, so they're not automatically placed in a group. I need to actually manually put them in a group. So if you are one of those individuals that have added recently, that is the reason you don't see a group. So bear with me until the end of the today, end of today, and if you still don't see it, then you need to contact. Any question I missed? Let's see. And yes, I, and I, I did mention that it's another biology class. Um, I think we're good, right? Any other thing, any other concern you guys may have? Okay. So that's as far as your lab goes. Um, no, the first lab is not on Excel. Every document you submit is Word document. I don't know, Janet, what class you belong to, um, but if they have tables, you just fill up the table um, and then submit those. If you require to complete a graph, like your homeostasis at the end, it requires a graph, then you can either, as a group member, if somebody's familiar with Excel, they can submit the lab, sorry, submit the graph as part of the lab, not a separate document, or you can hand draw it. It's up to you and your group members, however you are comfortable with. But these documents are only submitted either as text entry, and if they have tables and many questions or pictures, then they have to be a file upload. Any other concern, guys? This is literally, your, this, this meeting is for that purpose, guys. So if you have questions or concerns so far, please let me know. Okay, let me just, uh, while I'm on your syllabus, actually because I'm done with that part of the class, um, let me just walk you guys through the syllabus. Earlier, um, privately, I got a message about the office hours. So let me clarify that first. So your office hours are set for either Tuesday at 7 to 9 a.m. and or Fridays 4 to 5.30 p.m. Number one. Office hours are not mandatory. I will have them set up in your calendar, so you're welcome to join me if you wish. Um, I cannot reinforce the idea how important it is for you guys to participate in office hours. And I don't mean for you guys to just come and see what's going on. I mean, bring your questions, bring your lab questions, bring your lecture questions. Most of you guys, and I don't mean that as a, as, a, as a bad thing. Most of you may have never been experiencing any anatomy physiology class, and now you're getting all of this information all of a sudden on an online version. You cannot communicate me one-on-one -on -one if something on a PowerPoint doesn't make sense or in my lecture doesn't make sense. So that is your opportunity, guys, to come to the office hours, bring me questions, says, okay, I was reading your PowerPoint and the, the first five minutes did not make sense to me. Can you clarify that for me? I don't want to, guys, I don't want to see nobody in my office hours. And then when the exam time comes, I get 10, 20, 30 emails from my student complaining how hard the exam was. Exams are going to be hard, guys. Exams are, even though they are, and I'm going to put this in quote unquote, open note, open text, open everything, because you have access to that and I'm not going to control that. Do not make the assumption that you can open a PowerPoint and find the answers to your questions for your lecture or lab exam. They're not going to be direct. I still have to keep the integrity of the class, so the questions are not going to be, what is option, like, you know, like, what is this structure, okay? So don't expect to type those type of questions. They're not going to be very, um, I guess, a specific to the way, it's more content-based, I guess I should say. It's more your understanding of the content rather than you regurgitating the information directly from the PowerPoint. So just because you have access to the PowerPoint, trust me, exams will not be easier. So keep that in mind. Uh, unfortunately, lecture hours will not be recorded. 
unless I am reviewing a specific concepts for a class, then I may uh, record that. But usually, because I have private conversation with the students, um, I might have uh, somebody specifically going over their exams, then those are not going to be recorded. So no, you are going to be available and make those. Um, lectures are everything is guys everything is already recorded and ready for you in terms of your lectures the way that i showed you earlier guys the the the, chat, the links that i have those are youtube videos i just made it super simple for you guys that everything is available under your module so i'm going to go back to the module because i just want to make sure everybody's on the same page so if i go to week two for instance guys because i showed you week one this is what you will see. Your PowerPoint, the videos that are associated. So these videos you see, these are YouTube videos. See, YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. You don't need to do anything. These are already YouTube videos. You don't need to go to my channel to see what videos I have. Welcome to do so, uh, but you don't need to do that. Everything that you need to study for the class is on that week. That includes your lecture PowerPoints, your presentation, links to your Canvas posts, links to your lab, et cetera, okay? Nothing, you don't need to go to an external resource to get information for your class. Everything is bundled up into one place. Hopefully that answers your questions. Um, okay, I'll go over the exam times in just a second with you guys. Um, yes, exams are open notes. There are, uh, I mean, again, I can't sit and behind you and look at you and see if you guys are doing open notes almost universally i know everybody have notes in the, right next to them so i'm not going to challenge you guys on that but um no um i have if you look at your updated syllabus i have take out the proctorio and there is there was a lot of equity issue with that so um we have removed that from our system um so you are not required to use pectoria you are not required to have a webcam um, I have my, my I wrote my syllabus about three weeks ago and I had quite a few conversations with my fa uh, faculty friends and um, it seems kind of um, faculty are not for that so I have taken it up so if you have looked at the syllabus maybe three days ago it was Proctoria was there and the new updated syllabus I posted today Proctoria is not an option so it is an open note open text open online whatever resources you want to use all I'm saying is don't think just because you have access to those, you will be able to ace the exam. Not going to happen, trust me. Okay? Um, lecture slides are available on Canvas. I don't know what you mean by they're not available on Canvas. Um, so you just basically, so if I'm doing for lecture slides, this says download chemical level organization PowerPoint, that is your lecture slides. Um, I have checked through the classes and it seems like everything is available. If you do see something not available to you, please send me an email and I will look into it. But as of right now, at least for the first four weeks, which is lecture unit one for most of you guys, everything is available. So if you don't see it or there is a problem with that, please send me an email. Okay. Uh, anything else? I think I answered all of your questions up to this point. Okay. So let me go back to your syllabus because that is something that I wanted to continue going over. So sorry, it just takes a minute for it to upload. So office hours, again, not mandatory. Uh, you're welcome to come to it. Uh, what I am trying to do um, is I'm hoping that I can keep hours out, office hours are specific to one class. Um, I cannot prevent you from coming to that office hours if you do have a question, but my hope is that I can hold the office hours for only bio 155 students from 7 to 8 a.m. on Tuesdays. And then for uh, my bio 250 uh, would be Thursday from 4 to 5.30 p.m. And for my 251 class, it would be Tuesdays from 8 to 9 a.m. Now, does that mean 
you will not be able to come to my office hours other than those times. No, you are welcome to come to my office hours, but there is a chance that I will put you on a waiting room um, until I am done with other students that might be coming as a group for one class. Um, I'm not limiting your access to me. It just make it easier for me to cover one content with a group of people from the same class um, and then basically move on to the next class. So again, I'm gonna repeat this guys. If you are a 155, the best time to visit me if you have questions would be Tuesdays uh, from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. If you are bio 251 a student, the uh, best time to visit me is Tuesday 8 to 9 a.m. And if you are a Thursday class, best time would be Thursdays from 4 to 5.30 p.m. And Thursdays, I've, 250 has more time because I have double section and 50 plus students. Um, so don't think you are not special, 155 and 251. It's just, uh, it's easier for me to deal with a larger number of students. My email address is available. I've been getting quite a few emails from you guys, so please, um, uh, Keep in mind that you guys are not the only students that I have. I also teach another campus. So I will do my best to respond to you. My response time is within 24 hours. So if you respond, if you email me right now, probably on the first week, I'm pretty good at responding to you because kind of things are hectic and they're trying to figure things out. Uh, so I'm pretty fast, but when the class got, falls into a more routine, uh, then uh, the response time will, will go up to 24 hours. The way I work, and I'm gonna share this with you, if you have looked at my welcome page, um, I have a 21 month old baby, which just loves computers, which means if I'm trying to type something, she probably will not let me do it. Uh, so I have to wait for her to go to sleep at 9 p.m. and then I can start to actually work. Uh, so if you, respond, if you email me at 8 p.m., the chances are you're gonna hear back from me the same night. But if you email me at seven o'clock in the morning, I won't not be able to get back to you until 8 p.m. the night or 9 p.m. the night at night. Uh, so please do keep in mind um, it is written in the syllabus. So please don't complain to my chair or my dean that I'm not responding to you. I am. If you have been my student previously, you know I'm pretty good at correspondence. Um, you just have to give me within that 24 hours. And also keep in mind that if it is weekends, I do not check my emails. I need that time to unwind from literally hundreds of emails that I receive. So I don't check it. Um, if you uh, email me basically anytime past Friday nights, um, you will not hear back from me until Monday morning or Monday night sometimes. Hopefully, uh, again, my goal is not to agitate you guys, but please do keep in mind that I do have a life as well and I am trying to keep that separated from my work life, which is all blending together right now. Um, recommend the textbook. I get a lot of emails from this. I have included this for you guys as a link. But again, do remember that if I want you guys to read a chapter in your um, uh, textbook, it's already hyperlinked in your module. So you don't really need to do anything and go search a book page or anything. All you need to do is click on a link that is available for that specific week if I do want you to read something. Nothing beyond that, nothing, basically, that's it. You already have the information. You don't need to go search it in a textbook. Uh, so just follow the hyperlink in your module week. Uh, you are required to have a um, computer. Um, a lot of people may want to take their exams on their phone. Uh, I will strongly recommend against that. Um, please do keep in mind that uh, there are two things um, in your um, campus. One, there are uh, free Chromebooks that they can provide for you. This is uh, basically a way to make sure that our students have access to resources and there are also hotspots available. Um, but you need, for those information, you need to contact the IT department or the help desk to get that information. Uh, so do keep in mind if you don't have access to internet that is stable, um, welcome to contact them. If you do need a computer, they do have Chromebooks so you can also access that. And then lastly, uh, I believe um, as of right now, the library is open Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Uh, so if you do need to do some work, um, library is available. Um, do keep in mind that sometimes the numbers are limited in terms of number of students they can accept. Um, any question guys? Any, any concern that you wanna ask up to this point about anything that I've discussed? 
So while you're typing, if there is any questions, I'm gonna continue. Canvas is gonna be your friend, guys. Make sure you guys log in. I would say on a daily basis. Um, you will get notification if your grade is updated, if there is an announcement up, um, uh, if you have a proper notification on your phone. So do set that up. Um, if you're unfamiliar with the Canvas app on your phone, I will strongly recommend for you to download Canvas a student version of it, not instructor version, um, and then log in through your regular login and set your notification. Um, okay, uh, somebody asked me earlier about the exams. Regardless of uh, what class you're taking, your exam for that week will be available, and this is again universal for my students, they will be available from Fridays 5 p.m. of that week until Sunday 11.59 p.m. That's about 56 hours of time that you have, or 50 hours of time that you have to take the exam, guys. I don't wanna hear excuses for whatever reason that you guys weren't able to take the exam because it is not a certain time. You can choose your own time. If you have kids, job, whatever the reason is, there is no chance that you will be working from Friday 5 p.m. till Sunday 11.59 p.m. So please make sure find the time, look at your schedule, uh, set up the time that you're planning to take the exam and then go from there. Lecture and lab exam, sorry, lab exams, are going to be available uh, from uh, Mondays, the week that is scheduled for, uh, from 8 a.m. until 11.59 p.m. of Tuesday. I'm sorry, I just looked at this and I missed the Tuesday here. They're Monday from 8 a.m. until Tuesday, 11.59 p.m., which basically gives you about 40 hours to take the exam, or I guess 36 hours to take the exam. A lab exam are a little bit shorter because I don't want it to be out available for too long. There is reasons from my side that I don't want to make it available. Um, so I'm not going to get into that detail with you guys. Um, as far as the type of questions that you're going to get, regardless of lecture or lab exam, you will have uh, multiple choice, which are the most common type. You will have true and false questions, uh, fill in the blank, and then essay questions. There are quite a few critical thinking questions, again, regardless of what class you belong to, so do keep that in mind. Um, lecture exams, depending on your class, you either have four or five lecture exams. If you have four lecture exams, they're 100 points each. If you have five, they're 80 or 85 points each. Um, Canvas posts, you have one every week. That is a requirement. You do need to complete them. Each of them worth three points. And again, the number might be slightly different for which each class. Uh, lab assignments, uh, as I mentioned earlier, they're either group or individual. Uh, they are listed if they're group or individual, so please uh, check that to see if uh, which case it is uh, and work closely with your group members. There are three lab exams, regardless of what class you're taking. The total point might be different, but there are always going to be three lab exams. And then depending on the class, you either have four or five lecture and slash lab quiz. Now, where do you know where these exams and the schedules are? There are quite a few places you can find that information. So I'm gonna just scroll down to your syllabus down here. Here is the size schedule for that week. Notice again, it says week one, the date that the week starts, like this week, the chapter is associated with it, what lab you guys are going to be doing and what Canvas post you're going to be doing. If you do have a quiz schedule for that, it's also listed here. And then you basically go through this, uh, you have the information for your lecture and labs, and you don't actually even need this syllabus. I have to have it, but you're not required to look at this. Uh, there are more organized version of this on Canvas that you can access your information. Now notice in this syllabus, in this chat, oh, sorry, I should say in this page, I don't have the lecture and lab information available for you. For that, you have it here. And I wrote it again here as well. Lecture exams are always gonna be available Fridays from 5 p.m. until Sunday 11.59 p.m., regardless of the class. And then labs are scheduled Monday at 8 a.m. until, here's my Tuesday, Tuesday 11.59 p.m. for that week. And then I exactly told you what each of the exams will include. Again, I have given you the time here, so really no excuse for our students telling me oh, I didn't know there was an exam. 
Um, sorry, I'm going to go back. Somebody posted a chat question says, are we only meeting Tuesday and Thursdays? Uh, 7 to 9, 4 to 5, 30 on Thursday. Uh, the answer is, we're not really meeting, guys. Remember, this is a 100% asynchronous class, which means there is no lecture, there is no lab in person. The only reason we need to have this is if I was even um, an instructor and not pres present in the class, I still needed to hold office hours. And these are office hours. They're not meeting times in terms of I'm going to go over a lecture with you. I'm going to go over a lab with you. If you have questions, those are the times you can access me through Zoom meetings and ask those questions. And it basically can see me, ask me questions. You know, if you have a concern, you can talk to me. That's the type of thing that I'm talking about. That. Uh, we don't have a, for any of my classes, we don't actually have a face-to-face -face meeting in terms of computer, I guess I should say, online meeting that you require to be there. I hope that answered the question regarding that. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, what else do we have to go? Um, let me go back to the pages early. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Almost there, guys. Just bear with me for a few more minutes. Um, lab assignments, I already told you guys, basically make sure you guys follow this. It is your responsibility unless somebody just basically doesn't participate in your group activity. Uh, then as a group, you need to email me. So make sure all of your group members are uh, present in there so I can confirm that everybody is on the same page. Uh, breakdown for your class is basically kind of logical. 10 percentile uh, drop will cause you to drop basically to the next grade level. Attendance. Again, there is no attendance, quote unquote. Um, however, I, and I want to just read over this for you guys. Um, it says failure to show up for a mandatory office meetings or the first day or convenient indirectly for the first may lead to your administrative drop. So I'm not going to drop the students if they're not here today. As you can see, many people are not here. We only have 21 people and have about 100 students. Um, it says it may have result on it. However, if I have no activity uh, from you guys within the end of this, the first week, then it will be considered a no-show and you will be administratively dropped. Um, so do keep that in mind. Uh, so keep up with your information, make sure you're visiting. I can actually track who has visited the Canvas uh, by surprisingly monitoring how many hours you have been on Canvas. So don't be surprised if I catch you and I say, oh, okay, you haven't really spent time in Canvas and you can't really complain to me about uh, not doing well in your exam. So there are many hours you need to be spending on this web page. <laughs> um, if you fail to drop yourself and you think that class is too hard for you guys and you fail to drop yourself from the class, there would be an automatic letter grade assigned to you at the end of the semester. So please make sure you guys um, um, communicate with me if there is a major issue that is stopping you from completing the class um, and then if that issue cannot be resolved by me trying to be more flexible then you are required to drop the class guys i will not be doing that and um, if the deadline passes then i really will not be able to do anything for you unfortunately um, submissions late submissions for assignments and this is a really key word for me guys so please pay attention you may submit any assignments in terms of Canvas posts and lab, either group or individual labs after the due date. That is not going to prevent you. So I have a due date, but you may submit it until the end of the semester. However, here's the thing. Any, every time you forget to submit an assignment or you haven't submitted it, you will lose about 20%, about, sorry, you will lose 20% of your grade every 24 hours that have passed from the original submission due date. So basically if assignment worth five points, if you haven't submitted it by the end of tomorrow and it's due today at 8 a.m., then by next 8 a.m. you'll have dropped to four points. And then we continue going down. By the end of the fifth week, oh, sorry, fifth day, you will end up with zero points. So there is no purpose of submitting that assignment. Um, Sorry, I'm re for bio 250. That will be the time. Correct. Just want to make sure. I, I'm not sure what what you mean by 
the time for 250. Uh, so if you can clarify your question, Jen, I would appreciate it. Uh, where do you find your group? I'll show you guys just in just a second. Oh, the office hours is the same. Yes, for all classes, the office hours is the same. Um, sorry guys, I'm kind of going back and forth because I'm doing both the moderating and then and basically doing the actual meeting. Class etiquettes, guys, when you're sending me an email, um, please make sure you guys uh, follow the standards. I said email me, I just noticed again, I keep noticing my mistakes in this email. Um, it has my LA campus email, but you guys are SBBC, so I'm assuming you already know my email address as I've gotten quite a few emails from you guys. Uh, so com communicate with me through either email, it's fine. Uh, but please, please guys, follow the etiquettes of sending an email. Pay attention to your spelling and grammar. Uh, make sure you include the subject line. Uh, please do not address me with the word hey. Uh, I have gone to school for 17 years to get my doctorate, so <laughs> the word hey doesn't really quite applicable here. Um, so please make sure you guys, um, I guess, be respectful to me. Even when you're on a face-to-face, -face, you will not call me hey. So just assume in an email, it's the same concept. And then um, use the proper sign off as in write your name, um, something that I can correspond to. Again, JD does not help me understand who you are. Uh, I get weird emails in terms of email addresses that doesn't really tell me who the person is emailing me. Uh, so make sure you guys give me a name so I can go back if you guys want me to check something, it's associated with a specific class, then I have the opportunity to get that information for you. Uh, final grade is not a debatable topic that's regardless of if we're face to face or an online class. Uh, so please do keep in mind that um, I do require you guys to keep up with your own grades, make sure everything is um, submitted properly. If a document is missed, submit it as fast as you can. Uh, but please do not contact me at the end of the semester. Uh, giving me sob stories, and I'm sorry, I don't mean that to be disrespectful, but I have had many, many, many encounters like that. Um, I haven't heard any problem from the student throughout the semester, no communication, and then at the end of the semester, a student giving me these really, really, uh, you know, heart-wrenching stories about how difficult their situation was. If you have a challenge that prevents you effectively complete the class, withdraw from the class and retake it. That doesn't mean anything less about you guys. It doesn't make you less of a person, less of a student. Everybody has challenges. When I was doing my PhD, I withdraw twice from my PhD program uh, before I was able to complete it, financially and emotionally. Um, so you are not alone. Just don't assume that it is just your life and everybody else is happy and healthy. But before you do that, talk to me, send me an email, come to my office hours. Describe your situation, explain it to me, and I will do my utmost to help you guys get through this in terms of your class. But there are certain things that are out of my control. I cannot change the policy of the class for one student. So, um, but don't wait till the last minute to share those things with me. Uh, share it early on if you do have challenges. And again, I will do my utmost to help you guys deal with that. Um, keep a close eye on your grades, and I'll show you that in just a minute as well. Um, academic policy, uh, no plagiarism, no cheating, no fabrication. I have taught a summer class, um, two of my 155 classes. I have students that literally copied the same assignment, erased the name, and then we submitted assignment under a different name. Uh, that is a really, really big no-no. <laughs> um, I ended up not reporting them because they were, they were Accentuate, I can't say it now. There were difficult situations. Uh, I didn't report them, but again, do keep in mind, guys, I am letting you know right now, ahead of time, before we even submit an assignment, if I catch you plagiarize, cheat, or fabricate documents or uh, paperwork, then you will get a zero and you will get reported to the department chair and the dean. And the rest is up to them how they can handle it. But, um, um, it is not acceptable in my class to cheat, uh, so don't try it. Um, professional dispositions and um, visitor canvas. If you are a DSPS student, please make sure your paperwork have been submitted to me so I can um, get that done um, before your first exam. 
especially when it comes to extra time for students. I have to manually set those up for the individual people. Um, there are um, resources outside, guys. We do have Success Center open. I have provided the information for you guys, so review that, contact them if you have any question about uh, basically how to access um, tutors. Um, um, but your best option will still be me, guys. I always tell you guys, um, nobody knows what the exam is and what the questions are other than me. <laughs> so uh, if you have any questions regarding content, I will be your best choice in terms of um, what to read, what to study, how to read it, um, and then clarify any misunderstandings. Any questions, guys? Okay, the study guide. Somebody is asking about the study guides. Um, I have posted it for one class. I just honestly, it's been hectic. So um, I will be posting the study guides for all the classes, only for the lecture exams for the rest of the semester. It's in, in its own module. So it will be a module that says the study guides, lecture exams, and you can find that information there. If it's not there right now, you will have it by the end of the week, this week. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, uh, so um, quick notes in terms of um, one last thing. I'm, I'm just gonna finish up. I know people didn't have extra time set up for this. Announcement is your big thing. Again, if you have Canvas a student, if you do have notification active, then anytime I'll send an announcement, you will get an email. You don't really need to visit the assignment tab discussion you really don't need to see it again it will be directly to your um, hyperlink so you don't need to click on these individually grades is your people's favorite right <laughs> so everybody want to know what they send a class a really cool fact about this is that you can actually input your own grade to see how well you will be doing in the class you cannot change the guard that's already inputted by me, but you can kind of get an idea how well you should be doing in, in your assignments to do well in the class. That's a really good way of tracking your points. Um, everything in terms of your labs and your Canvas posts are here. The only thing is not included right now because I haven't uploaded any exams for any classes. Uh, the points for the lecture and lab exams are not here. As soon as I input that, then that will show up in your grade as well. Um, when are these assignments due? Here is the exact date and time the assignments are going to be due, guys. Really good way for you guys to keep track of your assignments. What if you forgot this? Where else can I find that information? Where else can I find information? When is my submission dates are? Go to your syllabus option. This is the best version to look at it, guys. It is broken down to individual dates and when that assignment is due. Notice all of your assignments due is by 11.59 p.m. Regardless of the date, they're always due on 11.59 p.m. So that's another way for you to track to see uh, what assignments is due at what day. What if I forget this? What's the most logical place I can find where each assignment's due? Go to your calendar option. So if I click on my calendar right here, and I'm just gonna show you this, if you have multiple classes, they will show up as color coded. So notice right here, I have Canvas Post 2, Lab 1, and then it has the dates exactly put into it. Again, as soon as I put the exam in, the exam will also show up here. If you have multiple classes and the assignment shows up on, for those classes as well, with just a different color. Uh, and you guys can adjust to see which classes you only want to see. So you don't have to see all your classes at the same time. Any questions? I'm just trying to wrap up before we finish. If you do have questions, please post it. People were asking me about their group, where they can find that. It's where your peoples are. So the option people is where you have the group information. And again, this is everybody in the class, but if you have the option groups, and your view might be different because uh, as an instructor, my view is a slightly more different than yours. Uh, but then uh, you can open this. Here's the member in this group. And the one that has the little person next to it, that would be the leader for the group uh, where they would be submitting the assignment. 
any questions, any concern people have about anything? Mm. Oh, uh, the other thing I forgot, let me ju I'm just looking through my notes, making sure that the, the thing is there. Um, your Zoom links, oh my God, I was like, what am I using? Your Zoom links will also be added to the calendar. So um, if you guys are basically want to know what Zoom link you need to use, the office hours with their corresponding Zoom link will be available directly into your calendar as well as soon as I schedule them. Uh, so we won't, we will have our first office hours basically tomorrow and then on Thursdays, tomorrow seven to nine and then the day and then Thursday uh, four to five thirty. Um, yeah, you might actually have some feature. Unfortunately, iPad is not fully compatible. I have had these issues. There is nothing I can do. I apologize from my end that makes it accessible. It's the features of the iPad itself that makes it unavailable. Um, so I would recommend for you to contact the school and see if you can get your hand on a Chromebook. Uh, that way you have access. Everything should be loading perfectly on, on Canvas. I apologize that I can't do anything about. Um, uh, one quick note, guys, if you are going to take exams, complete any assignment on the Canvas, the best browser to use will be Chrome. Chrome, the updated Chrome will be the best web, uh, web browser for us. A lot of people in my previous semester had difficulty when they use Firefox. Do not use Explorer. Explorer will not load many of the pictures for the exams. So, and then you lose your opportunity to take the exam effectively. Um, so um upload google chrome and uh use that if you're using your canvas it makes a lot of the things easier to manage i hope i answered all of your questions if you do have any questions and you want to hang out or talk to me uh, that's perfectly fine i'm going to stick around for another five ten minutes if you do have any questions Otherwise, I am happy to have you guys all in my class. I am really, really honestly looking forward to this because this is gonna be awesome. I am super excited. Uh, please don't, do not hesitate to contact me if you have any questions. Um, I will do my utmost to make this process for you as easy as possible. Um, we just have to work with each other, okay guys? Um, so go get started, do what you need to do, and let me know. And if you just wanna talk, Hop into the office hours and we can just chat. Okay, take care guys. You may log out if you want. <laughs>